Hi, I'm Ole Krüger and I would like to present you our nonlinear branch and bound solver Juniper, which is written in Julia and is entirely open source. First of all, I will explain the kinds of problems Juniper is solving, a bit about the framework it is written in, the implementation of Juniper itself, then I will show you some benchmarking results and I will conclude the talk. Juniper is solving so-called mixed integer nonlinear problems where you want to minimize the fun nonlinear function f which depends on two types of variables x and y where x are real variables and y are discrete variables and you also have some nonlinear constraints g which also depends on those two types of variables. Now if f and or g are non-convex then Juniper only finds the local, op local optimal solution instead of the global optimal. Juniper's main goal is to solve large-scale and non-convex mixed integer nonlinear problems, which often appear in infrastructure systems, for example, optimal transmission switching and optimal natural gas flow. For those large-scale problems, it's normally not possible to find the global optimal solution. And it turns out that nonlinear branch and bound provides a powerful heuristic in those cases. Juniper is a lightweight implementation which makes it easy to explore new heuristics. Juniper is written in the relatively new high level programming language Julia, which helps us with our fast prototyping goal and the exploration of new ideas. And despite its high levelness, Julia has a comparable speed to lower level languages like C. It also has its own modeling language for optimization called JUMP and JUMP is comparable to AMPL or GAMS but it has a direct connection to the solver via the C libraries instead of using files and it's easy to change solvers without changing the model which you will also see later in a shortcode example. Now about the general idea of solving mixed integer nonlinear problems with Juniper using nonlinear branch and bounds. Here we remove the discrete variables first. So consider them as being real. Use a nonlinear solver to solve the so-called relaxation and then y1 might be for example 0 0.5 at the moment which is not feasible for the real problem but the best outcome for the real relaxed version of it. Now we can split the part the problem into two parts one where we add a constraint y1 has to be small or equal to 0 and one where it has to be greater or equal to 1. Here it might be the case that y1 can't be greater or equal to 1, so the problem is infeasible then, and then we can cut off that branch entirely and just focus on the one where y1 is small or equal to 0. And we further proceed with this tree structure until we find the local optimal solution. Now a bit more about the impl implementation of Juniper. So we implemented also a feasibility pump to find feasible solutions faster before starting with the tree structure. Here we need a nonlinear solver as well as the mixed integer solver and solve a nonlinear problem and the mixed integer problem alternating. And this helps us to find feasible solution faster, which itself helps to cut off branches of the tree further in a further on in our process. Now there are two types of decisions to make in nonlinear branch and bound or branch and bound in general. One is the node selection and one is the variable selection. For the node selection we implemented three traversal strategies. Best first search always uses the node which has the current best objective. Depth first search uses the node which is on the deepest level of our tree structure and the combination uses steps first search until a feasible solution is found and then uses best first search to further improve this solution. For the variable selection we implemented four different branching strategies. 
most infeasible uses the variable which is first away from this key, discrete, so near 0.5. Pseudocost branching uses a history of change in objective by each variable and then uses the best candidate. Strong branching branches on more than one variable, so which you can see on the right hand side. And for full point strong branching it also it branches on all of the available discrete variables and then picks the best candidate afterwards. Reliability branching is a combination of pseudocost branching and strong branching. So strong branching is used a couple of times for each variable and then the history of pseudocost branching is used. And for non-convex problems it also turns out that sometimes the root node relaxation is in local infeasible and then it might it's a good idea to restart at the root node at a different point to try again to find a local optimal solution for the relaxation. And we also implemented parallelization of the tree structure, of traversing the tree structure. Now a bit about our defaults. So it turns out that it's reasonable to use the feasibility pump and we use it for one minute until we start with the branch and bound part. And we restart the root node if it's infeasible for at most three times. And we used strong pseudocost branching, which means we use full strong branching in the first level if possible. So if it takes less than about two minutes and then use pseudocost branching further on in our tree structure. And we always use best first touch. Now here you can see a short code example. First of all, we install and include four packages using the package manager of Julia. We include the mod modeling package jump and three solvers, a nonlinear solver IP opt, a mixed integer solver CBC, and our solver Juniper. Then we define the model and also the solver which will be later used to solve this model. And here we use our solver Juniper, which takes one nonlinear solver as a parameter. Here IP opt to solve the relaxations in the street structure and a mixed integer solver to use the feasibility pump. Then we define five variables, which are all discrete and bounded between zero and 10. We define our objective which is to maximize the dot product of our values v with our variables x. And we have two constraints, one is linear and one is nonlinear. And then we can just call the function solve to solve that model and get a status back like optimal or local optimal or infeasible. And we can also get the values of our variables x at the local optimal point. Now a bit about our benchmarking results. So first of all about our test set. We choose to use the MINLP discrete problems, which is about which it contains about 700 instances. But we were only interested in really non-trivial uh, in really instances with a non-trivial non-linear component. So we rem removed instances where there are less than 10 linear constraints. And we also removed problems which are easily solvable by global solvers, which means we remove problems where either the global solver skip or the global solver Quen found a global optimal solution in less than one minute. In the end, we got around 300 instances left. Now for our comparison, we used three local solvers and two global solvers. For the local solvers, we used Bonman and Minotaur as open source local solvers for comparison and Nitro as a co commercial one. And the global solvers, we have Quen as a open source solver and Skip as a global solver. And we used 
all of the solvers in their latest version. And we also changed some parameters for the solvers which works best in those 300 instances. For example, for Bondman we also used the option that it restarts at the root node if infeasible, which, in, which turns out to be quite useful, even if it's not the default in Bondman. Now here you can see how many instances were solved by each solver in a time limit of one hour. At the bottom you can see the two global solvers, Quen and Skip, which start at a one minute time frame as we removed all the other instances in our instance selection beforehand. And you can see that Skip solves a bit more than 25%, whereas Quen solves less than 10% of the instances in one hour to the global optimal solution. Juniper solves more than 50% locally, whereas Bonmin and Nitro solve between 40 and 45% locally in that one hour time frame. And Minotaur solves a bit more than 35% of the instances. And you can also see uh, Juniper with the paralyzed version with 16 cores which solves more than 55% in in the inst of the instances. And it's not reasonable to use more than 16 cores at the overhead gets too big. And as you have seen in the short code example, it's easy to swap the solvers Juniper depends on. So here you can see Juniper without the feasibility pump as well, as well as Juniper with the feasibility pump and IP opt as a nonlinear solver, as well as Gurobi, GLPK, and CVC as mixed integer solvers, and Nitro instead of IP opt for the nonlinear part as well. So you can see that it's reasonable to use the feasibility pump in the first place, but only using CVC or Gurobi for the mixed integer solver as GLPK wasn't able to find to terminate the feasibility pump in less than one minute, which was our time limit for the feasibility pump. CBC and Gurobi perform quite similarly, so we choose CBC, which is an open source solver as our default, and it doesn't improve the results if we use the commercial solver Nitro as the open sol solver IP opt turns out to be a better choice for the nonlinear relaxation in our case. Now it's not only reasonable to compare the performances of these solvers in this in this way. It's also reasonable to see how many for how many instances a feasible solution was found by the local solvers and the gap between the feasible solution and the best known solution out of the six solvers. So Juniper finds a feasible solution for 228 instances, whereas the other three local solvers, Bonman, Minotaur and Nitro, only find a feasible solution for less than 200 of these instances. In the second row you can see the average gap where the specific solver fa found a feasible solution where the gap of Juniper and Nitro is an average relative, relatively high whereas it's relatively low for Bornman and Mio and Tower. And in the third row, you can see the average where all of the four local solvers found a feasible solution in one hour, which is the case for 113 instances. Here the gap, the average gap to the best known solution by Juniper and Nitro is about 20%, whereas it's less than 1% for Bondman and about 10% for Minotauro. But this is only the average gap, so on the right hand side you can see the gap distribution for these 100, 113 instances. 
and you can see that most of the time also Juniper and Nitro find a feasible solution which has a gap of less than 1% but it has some outliers where the gap is bigger than 100% and Bonmin doesn't have these kind of outliers. Now here you can see a Venn diagram of the instances where each of the four local servers found a feasible solution and Nitro finds a feasible solution for different problems than Bonmin for example whereas Juniper is a go good combination of these four local solvers in finding feasible solutions and it also finds sometimes a feasible solution for instances where none of the other three local solvers found a feasible solution. In general Juniper provides a high level platform for exploration. It makes it easy to change the subsolvers so whenever IPOPT for example improves then Juniper would improve as well or if they there will be a new nonlinear solver then Juniper can use that easily. Juniper is good in finding feasible solutions and in general it's comparable to other established local solvers. I would like to thank the CPAI or our conference in general and especially our anonymous reviewers